Hello sunshines, welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. My name is Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. And it is the 29th of October, which means it is the end of October. And um, I'm distracted by my own background. Um, and so this is the October vloggy thing, episode thing. Um, I, I did do a fair bit of recording the first two weeks of October, so I'll put that after. Um, but you're hanging out in my room with me. I just rearranged my room. So this chair used to be in front of that window that's behind you. And like everything, the whole room got shifted. So it's, it's new to you. It's new to me. I only did it a few days ago. Um... Hi, I'm babbling. How are you? I missed you. I kind of have a lot to talk about, so we'll see. We'll see how long this is. Plus, I don't know how long the clips are from earlier this month. Um, yeah, come hang out with me. Come, come in. Come hang out. I miss you. I miss you when I feel awkward. <laughs> it's fine, right? We're fine. Everything's fine. Okay, so... Let's talk about some things that I don't have with me, but I will put in pictures. I decided at the beginning of the month that I wanted to make some, hold on, I need, I need some hand stuff to do while I'm telling the story. Um, I decided that I wanted to make sets for my team. So hats, cowls, and fingerless mitts. And I've been doing very well at making those. I got some Bernat blanket yarn and some Lion Brand Hometown USA. So really thick, really chunky. Um, it was all on sale at Joann's. And I made a couple sets, which I'll put in pictures here, for my team at work. So that was good. One set I need to do the cowl and the hat but I've cast on the hat and um I only bought two balls of hometown USA I bought one ball of the blanket the Burnett blanket yarn for the sets because I knew that would be enough I don't know how much I can get out of one ball of hometown USA it's been a little while since I've done that um like made made hats or whatever out of hometown USA so I have to figure that out, but, um, but yeah, it's going well and hopefully my team, um, at school, sorry, my, my work wife is texting me and I'm distracted. Um, hopefully my team at school likes what they're getting. I, I don't know. I felt, I felt like I wanted to make things for people, um, and I don't have that many people to make for this year, like compared to past years. So for those of you who are new here and you're like, what is she babbling on about? Um, a year, a year and a quarter ago ish, uh, my, my boyfriend and I of seven years broke up and I used to make gifts for his whole family. <laughs> Okay, not his whole, whole family, but like his sister and her three daughters and his brother and his mom and sometimes his other brother um, and him. And so like that's a lot of people to just not craft for. And then my mom passed away earlier this year, so I no longer am making things for her, obviously, or her boyfriend um, or her boyfriend's kid. So, so yeah, that's just a lot of people to, to not craft for. And even though I don't have a ton of making time, I still like to make, but I don't like to make just to make, if that makes sense. Like I, I like to make things for a purpose and I don't need a ton of things personally. Like I have been knitting for, um, 13 years 
so I have a bunch of socks and I have some sweaters and I have shawls and my, my personal knitting wardrobe is pretty complete at this moment. Um, I will be showing you a couple things that I'm making that I feel my wardrobe is lacking, but yeah, I just don't, I don't feel the need to make a bunch for myself and, um, my littlest kiddo, she's not little, <laughs> but my littlest kiddo doesn't really wear, no, lies. She totally wears the hand knit skirt that I made her a ton. I made it for her earlier this year. She wears it a lot. Um, my older kiddo would definitely take more socks. So maybe I'll start like in the new year instead of just making them only socks for the winter holiday. Um, maybe I'll just make my kiddos more things. I don't know. Neither of them ever ask for anything anymore. So I don't know. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to make more like holiday gift things and I just have such a lack of people to make for. I don't, I have a lot of people to make for, but comparatively, comparative, like that's so many people who I'm not making for this year. It feels weird. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was a really weird diatribe. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm in kind of weird headspace today. Not bad. Just very like reflective. Um, I'm definitely having, yeah, reflective. Reflective is the word. I went through some stuff, like some of my mom's stuff over the weekend. It's Sunday now. So yesterday and today I've been going through some of my mom's stuff that I brought here so that I could go through it at my leisure. Um, cause when I cleaned out her house, there was a point where I was like, I am out of spoons to go through things, but these are her things. So I will take them to go through at home. And I finally done that. <sighs> so I no longer have her bins just like taking up my physical space or my, you know, as, as much of my mental real estate. So that's where I'm at headspace wise. <laughs> I'm trying to like process through all of that. Um, okay. Let's talk about what I, what else I've been making. This is a weird episode, right? I'm sorry. I'm weird today. Um, I am making a sock for one of my friends. I have known him since high school and he's like my movie buddy. So we mostly get together to go to the movies. So we, we hang out and, uh, we talk for a little while after the movie and then we leave. And it's really nice to like have someone to go to the movies with without like, I don't know. P.S. I'm new to the whole dating scene and I don't like it. So it's nice to have someone to go to the movies with without it being a date. That's what I'm saying. So anyway, last year he got me the coolest Totoro bag. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. It's the cutest thing ever. And, um, we had talked about like the possibility. Well, he gave it to me in the springtime and I had talked about the possibility, possibility of like maybe socks or something like, cause he was like, Oh, I got you something really, really cool. I hope you like it. And I was like, well, I have to make you something cause I don't buy things for people for the holidays. I make people things. And, um, oh, I just realized I forgot something that I finished. Hmm. Anyway, hopefully I'll remember. If not, I'll see this when I'm editing and I'll be like, oh yeah, that. Um, so we had discussed, but we ended up going with the idea of a scarf, which was great because that was way faster than a pair of socks. But now I'm knitting a pair of socks. So this is the first sock and it's just a plain vanilla sock, which those of you who have been here for like a decade, do you remember when I was like, I wouldn't, I don't understand why people do vanilla socks. I get it now. I, I mean, it's cause it's because back then I was a stay at home mom, which I loved. 
and I had free time and like mental space to be able to take on complex patterns and stuff. And I loved them and like I was pushing myself technique wise and it was all great. And now <laughs> I am a single mom and I'm working all the time and I'm exhausted all the time. And sometimes all that I have brain power for is a vanilla sock. So this is my vanilla sock. It's, um, it's on US size one. It's a size 64, which there we go. There's the, I don't know. The lighting is it's October. It's autumn in Michigan. That's where we are. We're in Michigan. It's autumn. The lighting is terrible. Um, <laughs> It is what it is, but it's 64 stitches on a U.S. size one, no, U.S. size zero needles. I don't think I've special found my size ones. Nope, these are size zero, um, which sounds like it would be small for a guy's sock. He wears a size 10, but it's Patton's Croy, so it's kind of thicker and, um, if I was using a regular fingering weight yarn, I'd go up to like a, a 70 stitches or 72 maybe, but with Croy, I can get away with 64 stitches for a man's sock. So that's what I'm doing. It's just a regular heel flapping gusset and honestly, it feels a little boring right now, but it's good because I'm talking to you. And I started it as a vanilla sock because I needed movie knitting projects. It's also really good for walking around the classroom at school being vanilla. So I'm trying to get it past the gusset right now, um, this weekend so that I can take it back to school, to school and just be on the foot. So it's literally just vanilla forever and ever instead of having to worry about doing decrease rounds because I, when I'm walking around the classroom, forget that I need to do things like decrease. Um, in other news, I'm going to be starting a, a new project today. It's a test knit for Alendria Knits. Nobody who's been here this year has, is shocked about that. It's a sock and I can show you progress. Um, so we'll see what I get done tonight. I'll put in a picture whenever I edit this tomorrow. Tomorrow, probably. Honestly, I like to take video editing projects with me to my teaching, which um, I'm sadly not doing for very much longer. I teach at a local yarn shop, and uh, I only have a few more weeks that I am teaching class. Enrollment has been down in my class for like a year. So I want the extra time to my, like, I want that time back for me to do things with my kids because my kids are getting older and like driver's training is going to be a thing soon. I'm not ready, but you know, and, um, uh, my kids used to go to, both of my kids used to go to the school that I teach at. I'm a technology teacher, K through eight. And they both used to go there, but now one goes to a high school and, that means there's extra transportation to be figured out and stuff. So anyway, I'll probably edit this tomorrow. <laughs> it doesn't matter to you. I'm just babbling. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore, which is kind of sad, but I think it will be the best for me and my family going forward. Anyway, here's the sock. I also have been working on um, some leggings for myself. You can't see it, but it has a folded waistband and inside this waistband there is an elastic from, I don't know what, probably an old pair of boxers or something or an old pair of undies or something. Uh oh. No. Hold on. 
Oh, I totally installed the elastic twisted. Well, it's just going to have to live that way. It's totally going to have to live that way because I'm not taking out all of these inches of knitting. No, I did a provisional cast on and I knit with this gray because it was going to be on the inside and it didn't matter what color was there and it was the right weight and I didn't need it for anything. Um, so I put it <laughs> provisionally cast it on. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm pretty sure the elastic came from one of my pairs of underwear where the, like the elastic was still great, but you know, they were just getting worn out fabric wise. So and I twisted it. Oh, dang it. Oh, well, it's going to be fine. It has to be, it has to be because I'm not taking out almost, almost two inches plus two sets of, not that you can tell what I'm showing you. Can you tell? Can you tell that one side? I think you can probably tell. Yeah, you can tell. Uh, there's short rows for my bum and, um, it's two by two ribbing, black yarn on size one needles. I'm not taking it out. It's fine. The elastic's going to be twisted and I'm going to live with it. It's totally fine. Um, yeah, so these are going to be, these are going to be leggings to be worn under dresses and tunic like things and stuff, tunic length things and stuff during autumn to spring. So I'm pretty excited about them. And my intent is I have a bunch of a couple of years ago, three years ago, some number of years ago, I did a advent calendar of green yarns and I had big chunks of the yarn left over after I split it up for the people who had bought the advent calendars. So what I'm going to do for these leggings is I am going to do stripes of green alternating with the black. So that is the plan. And, um, I'm pretty excited for them, but obviously they're going slowly because they're size one fingering weight yarn and it's two by two rip. <laughs> I did that on purpose so that they would like not be baggy. And I did kind of gauge swatch, but gauge swatches lie and I want the ribbing to, you know, be forgiving of any weight fluctuations that I have. So, yeah, it's, it's not a lot. I, using um, Mano Stel Uruguay Allegria in the colorway black for the black yarn. And um, I used a partial skein to start. And then this is what I have a 100 of a 100 gram ball. I'm probably going to need to buy another 100 gram ball. So these are not inexpensive leggings, but it's fine. They're for me. And I love me enough to make me fancy clothes because I wear my clothes until they fall apart. And since they're hand knit, that means that I can hand patch any issues that come up. I've also been working on my scrappy blankets a lot and friends, do you remember back at the beginning of the year when I was like, oh, I want to use up 361 scraps of yarn and that's going to be kind of tricky, I think, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Um, I have less than 30 scraps to go and I have two months left in the year. And one of those months, my friend and I exchange mini skein advent calendars so I'm totally going to make it. Anyway, I've been working on all of my scrappy blankets. Corner to corner, mitered square, nor'easterly, a linen stitch blanket. But what I picked up yesterday is this. This is the Beekeeper's Quilt. I don't remember who it's by. Um, so it's Hexapuffs that I've been working on. <laughs> I started this blanket like I don't know, probably a decade ago with the intent that it would be for my oldest child when they graduated high school. Well, my oldest child is now in high school, so I should probably start working on this blanket in earnest because, you know, the hex buffs take a little time to make, but then there's all of the sewing together. And when I started putting this together, let's see if I have 
Yes, okay. So this is how I started putting them together. I was just joining the corners. And that's fine. But then I had to put, like I, I put it together in pieces like this. Just, you know, grab a bunch and put them together with the intent to go back and sew them all together later. Just because this is portable. Like, taking, um, taking a handful of or a bag full of these with me somewhere and sewing them together is easy, right? Versus taking a whole blanket. So I sewed them together like this and that was fine until I had a section that had something spilled or something and I ran it through the washing machine and those corners get pulled out in the washing machine and I didn't like the way it looked. So I've been not sewing them together for a really, really long time. And, oh my gosh, I'm very, I hope you can't hear all the texts that are coming through. Sometimes when I'm recording, you do, and sometimes you don't. I'm hoping you don't. Um, so yeah, I got, I didn't like the way that was looking. So I started sewing them together with like a mattress stitch. So you can't see in between the puffs. And, um, I don't know. I, I just did this yesterday and this morning. I've only done this many and these were all attached together. I don't know if you'll be able to tell like what the corner that this corner was already together. I'm still, so I'm mattress stitching the edges, but I'm still kind of doing a little knot in the corner. That way, if the mattress stitch breaks on one side, the whole strand of yarn doesn't come out. Because that would be really, really annoying because it would go from having one, like instead of having just one section, like one little bit popped out, it could be like a whole section of a blanket um, is no longer attached. So that feels really exciting. And I feel like as of this moment, which means it's right now and it's not going to be going forward. Um, but I kind of feel like I want to focus a little bit this holiday season on putting this together. No set goal. Just, you know, maybe, maybe make this a focal point for the next three months. We'll see how far it gets by December. Like, as I said, I've, I have, you know, different size sections that are put together in these threes, but this is where I'm starting with all of the pieces sewn together. This is it. This is what we've got. So, you know, maybe by December we'll have slightly more put together because the thing is, is I have a whole bunch of these puffs. Um, this is puffs. This is puffs. This box is puffs. These containers are puffs. I have a big red bag. I just organized my room I, so I don't know where anything is. Whatever. There's a big red bag that's full of puffs. I might have enough puffs to make a blanket. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I should start putting them together because I don't make a ton of hexapuffs anymore. I used to. When I started the blanket, I had like, I was doing like one a day and, um, when I finished a project, I would do like a special puff. Like this one is made inside out. So instead of having, having stockinette showing it, um, it just shows the, the reverse stockinette. Um, let's see if there's any fancy ones here. Oh, this one is knit from the center out and then from the outside edge back in. So that one's cool. I have some that have like ridges knit into them. Um, I think I've done some with intarsia and stuff. I don't know. Back when I started it, I was having a lot of fun with the puffs and now I just make them, I make like one at a time to,
to um, be the receptacle for the tails of yarn as I'm like weaving in ends and stuff. Uh, some of these are stuffed with yarn and some of them are stuffed with polyfill. And yeah, so I don't, I'm not making a ton of hexapuffs right now, but I would kind of like to know how many more I need. Maybe it'll be a bingo square next year. <laughs> I'm pretty successful though this year, I feel with the bingo, like I'm doing pretty good. So it might be motivating. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not making that a definite goal yet, but I have been working on that and I have been working on my other scrappy blankets, which feels really, really nice. It feels a little weird that I haven't been like making projects, but I don't have projects I need to make. Um, I'll talk about this in a minute. Oh, I have some, I am not fully prepared. So I'm going to have to pause this after I talk about this project because I have three things now that I need to grab. Um, I am making a sweater and you're not going to be able to see any of the detail because it's black yarn, but maybe I will try to take pictures. I am making the Bloomsbury by, I don't remember. I've made this sweater before, like four years ago or something. Uh, no, not four, three years ago. I made it during lockdown in like two weeks, but I made the size large and after I blocked it, it, like I did a gauge swatch and everything. After I blocked it, it was just a little bit too big because for the sweater, I really want it to be like zero ease, maybe like one inch ease. And it was more like six inches of ease. And I didn't like it. Didn't like the way it fit. So I've cast on and I have tried it on. It looks tiny right now, bunched up on the needles, but it fits. Um, I'm knitting the size medium. I have gone down needle sizes. I don't remember what the pattern recommends off the top of its head. It's worsted weight yarn and I'm using a size eight for knitting it. I think it calls for a nine for the ribbing and a 10 for the body. And I'm using, I used a seven for the ribbing and eight for the body, but the really pretty part, no, it's going to have to be a picture. Oh, maybe uh, you can tell that there's lace there. You just can't see what the lace is. It's really beautiful. It has this gorgeous lace panel down the back and I knit this exact sweater in black yarn but it didn't fit. So now I'm knitting it again in, um, 100% Merino yarn, superwash Merino instead of a Merino nylon mix, because I think I'll like that better for me personally. Um, and I'm really excited for it. So it's, I'm past the splitting for the sleeves. I'm on the body and normally when I got to the end of the first ball of yarn, I would have, um, switched over to knitting the sleeves, but I don't have needles in the appropriate size to knit the sleeves. I do. I could magic loop the sleeves. I don't want to magic loop the sleeves. I either want a 16 inch circular needle in a size eight, which I thought I had, but I don't. Or I want a nine inch circular in a size eight, which I definitely don't have. So when I teach at the shop tomorrow, I'm going to pick up one of those two things. I feel like a size eight, 16 inch would make more sense for me because I knit way more hats than I do like sweaters. Um, and plus sweater sleeves, it'd probably be fine on a 16 the whole way down. Probably. I don't know. I haven't 100% decided. I have to see what the LYS has available, but I'm really, really liking the sweater. And, um, once you get to the splitting of the sleeves, so there's lace on either of the fronts of the shoulders 
and it goes down the arms and then there's lace on the back. So it's very lace heavy at the beginning, which is kind of lovely, but it's two different lace charts. Um, once you get to just working on the back, there's only this much, or once you split for the sleeves, there's only this much of the lace that, or of the sweater that's lace. And then the rest is just stockinette. So that's kind of nice. I mean, there's some increases and decreases too, but not, not a ton and not a big deal at all. So I anticipate the sweater being finished maybe by Thanksgiving time. Um, I'm doing a Friendsgiving this year, which I've never done before because normally I would go to my mom's for Thanksgiving and that's not happening, which is fine. Or I've also done Thanksgiving with just me and my kids. Um, well, and my boyfriend when he was here, it was just the four of us. So this year, my sister's best friend was like, Hey, we should do Friendsgiving. So I kind of want this sweater to wear to Friendsgiving because I know there's going to be a babillion Facebook posts about it because it's my sister's best friend. So my sister is going to be there and my sister takes a babillion pictures and posts them to Facebook. So I'd really like the sweater done by then. I think it's totally doable. Um, yeah, because it's a worsted weight sweater on size eights. And the only like tricky part is the lace panel, but the lace panel is not even that tricky. <laughs> it's all memorized now. Like I don't have to think about it. I just have to do it. So, um, okay. I'm going to pause here. So I'm sorry if the camera shifts a little. You're very precariously stacked on some books on top of a laundry basket. That's my current setup. So when I come back, if the camera shifted, that's why. All right. So I'm back. For me, it's like five minutes later. For you, it's like no time at all. Um, I believe that I have clips of this. I Actually, I absolutely know I have clips of this. So if you want to see the inception of this project, we'll watch at the end. Actually, you know what? Why don't I just introduce the project here? So I have an idea for a project. Don't mind the kitten in the background. Um, <laughs> I have an idea. I have this giant basket. It's a big basket. Look at that. It's a huge basket. Full of bits of, like, bulky yarns and stuff. And the school that I work at has an auction for middle school. Like they can earn auction bucks and then they, they can bid on things. So what if I make a corner to corner blanket with all of these scraps? I feel like this is going to be one of those things where it seems like a really great idea and like I'm going to be getting rid of a bunch of scraps, but then I'm probably going to need to go buy more stuff so I can make the thing. I feel like that. That's what's going to happen. But, um, yeah, I'm going to do that. This is a thing. I'm going to, I'm going to see how far I can get this weekend. It's Saturday morning now. I think it's like 7 a.m. I have to work. I'm going to the apple orchard and tomorrow I'm going to see a movie. So I have a very full weekend, but let's see what happens, especially when I'm being distracted by this. Oh, look at that little face. She's very cute. She's just also very kitteny. Have you met Frappuccino? I can't remember if I introduced you to Frappuccino or not. This is my littlest kitten. She got him for her birthday, but she is um, afraid of teeth and claws. Like, she doesn't want to get hurt, so she doesn't play with him, so he comes and hangs out with me. So he can get his kitten he fill. When, you know, the grown-up cat in my house does not want to be kittenified. We take turns co-parenting this one. All right, on to the blanket. So, an update. I've used up most of the teeny tiny scraps that I had. With this, with the help of this one. With the help of you. Um, <laughs> most of them. Like, this wasn't super tiny, but these are the smallest two that I have left. And then 
have these bigger scraps. My plan is, what I'm thinking is, <laughs> that I think this is probably about two feet wide. I think I want it to be about four. And whenever I reach that, I'm going to go straight with it. So I'll use this ball and then this ball and see how long it gets. And then um, if I have any more of these little scrappy bits, then I'll do them either. Well, I'm sure I'll have to do it in the body, but if not, then on the decreases, I'm sure I'm going to have to buy more yarn. That's fine. But look at all of these scraps that I got out of my stash that have literally just been sitting without a purpose for years. I can't remember when I made my last um, blanket using these yarns. I know I've made a couple things using these yarns since then, and they've just gone in the bin, but um, definitely like this yarn is pre-COVID. Like all of this is pre-COVID. So yeah, they've been sitting for years. It'll be nice to have a kiddo at school have a cozy throw blanket. Hey sunshines, it's been a minute since I've done some car recording. Um, I am at an apple orchard that is like not too, it's okay, it's not super close. It's not too terribly far away. It's like close enough that we go once a year <laughs> and this is that once. And I'm kind of bummed because there's supposed to have like a play area, like a kitty play area, not like a kid, not like a five-year-old play area. Like there's stuff that are, it's still cool for teenagers, but there's supposed to be like a play area open during the day and it's not, but the haunted hayride and haunted house things are going to be open later. So we came early enough so that me and my little list and the two teenagers, my kiddo and their best friend, my oldest kiddo and their best friend would be able to like hang out in the play area and then the older two could go to the haunted everything when that starts but there's no kitty area right now so I've kicked the older two out of my car and told them to go walk around and leave me alone for the next like hour before things start opening and I'm taking a small nap yeah that one's taking a small nap so I am hanging out I brought plenty of knitting and crocheting because I knew that we were going to sit here while they did the haunted house things because I don't have a fight or flight response. Like fight, flight, fawn. Mine is just fight. So I can't go in haunted houses because as a friend of people who have been um, haunters before, I would feel really bad if I punched somebody for doing their job. Which happened once. So I'm not allowed to go. <laughs> I didn't punch anybody. I, I kicked a guy. It was a haunted hayride. And he like jump scared me and I kicked him in the shoulder. And then I felt really bad. So my response is fight. So I don't do those things. Um, so... I am working on, I'm crocheting a hat out of two balls of yarn that were in that basket this morning that didn't really fit with the rest of the yarn, like texture wise and stuff for the blanket. Um, so I don't know if the hat will be done when the yarn is done or if the hat will be, I think, I think the hat is going to be done when the yarn is done or I'm going to have to find another yarn to finish it off. Not sure yet. Um, I'll show you other things in a little bit. Hi sunshines. So it's Sunday evening and this is what the blanket looks like now. Um, I'm about half done with it. Let's look over here. Okay, so here's my corner and I am... I've started working straight now and I have nine rows worked straight. I think I might work another nine straight. Nine or less. And then start the decreases. Um, I'm actually going to grab a throw blanket that I have and measure against that. So I'm somewhere around the halfway point right now. And this is what I have left <laughs> of that stash of yarn. Um, so 
I'm going to need more yarn, obviously, because I have this much to go to finish it up. I do have a project in mind that's using this yarn that will likely have a little bit left over. And I think, if I remember right, I have an abandoned project or two that I can rip out the start of and put here. I'm also planning on rearranging my room this week. And whenever I do that, I find hidden yarn. So uh, I might not have to buy too much to finish this up. But I did use up, let's see, I used 22 scraps yesterday and three, I used up three today completely. So that makes this 25 minis used up in this project, 25 minis that aren't sitting around. And I do intend to donate this when it's finished so it'll just be out of my house and hopefully some middle schooler will love it um yeah so that's where I am on a Sunday evening I think I'm gonna put it away for now maybe pull it back out next weekend I don't know I don't do a lot of knitting during the week honestly I'm very busy so I have these tails to cut because I was working on it. Um, I went to the movies today and saw Return of the King. So I, <laughs> I attached these yarns. To, yeah, the, the green was attached last night at the, um, I took my kids to the haunted house thing. So I was to the green. So I did this at the movies today and then I dropped my hook and had to work on a knitting project. All right. So you saw the inception. So this is where I am with the blankets. I have used up all the little scraps. Pretty sure I was pretty close to doing that when last you saw it. And I am on my very last yarn. So my plan, my plan is to use the rest of this and then see what's left over from the hat mitt cowl set that I am knitting out of the dark teal homespun USA and add whatever's left of that in here and then pick up a few skeins of hometown USA a few several I don't know however many it's going to take me to do the last third of the blanket um, I think this should get me through the second third because I figured it out that I need on the on the shorter side or like the, the this side I need 18 rows to um, before I start decreasing and I'm at 15 so I'm relatively certain. That this will get me to where I need to decrease so then I'll have a third of the blanket that I need to buy yarn for which really doesn't bother me you know what I rearranged my room and I forgot to there's one spot where I might have some hometown USA like some scraps it's one spot in my room that, like, I moved the furniture, but I didn't pull that particular cube out. I pulled out all the other cubes, but not that one. And I'm going to go look <laughs> right after I finish recording. Um, so, anyway, the, no the, the deadline for this, I think, is the third week of November. Because, as previously stated, I think I'm making this for middle school auction. So I need to get to work on it. But it goes really, really quickly when I'm working on it. It's just, you know, I got to the point where I was just working on the brown and I stopped working on it. I did put on two or three rows this weekend. So I'm going to keep it out. I'm not going to hang it back up on its designated hook in its reusable, boring shopping bag. <laughs> I'll work on it a little bit today. Maybe get to the point where I need to decrease. Yeah, I think I will. That's only three rows to go. Let's do that. Um, so I'll do that today. 
And then what else? Oh, I'm really excited about this. I, I'm not going to lie, I kind of thought this project might not get finished. Like I knew it would. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that tricky. I'm actually going to put these on the wrong hands so it's easier to show you. Maybe you'll be able to see, maybe you won't. Um, I finished the gloves for my kid's dad. So he mentioned, uh, my best friend and I were down there earlier this year, and I had made him a pair of like fingerless gloves, fingerless mitts, and um, I made that for him, I think, last year. And he, I found... I found one, um, I went through my, my kiddos drawers while I was there cause he never thinks to do that. And then my kids, my kids have clothes there, but like he thinks they have more clothes than what actually fits because kids grow and like theoretically he knows this, but he doesn't see them super, super often. So anyway, I was there. So I went through their drawers and I found one of his fingerless mitts in one of the drawers and it was pretty chewed up and I was like oh that's a bummer and I was like so I guess you need a new pair of fingerless mitts and he was like what and I showed him and he was like oh, I was dog sitting for a friend's puppy because he has three dogs but none of them touch hand knit stuff at all um I only taught one of them not to do that but he must have taught the other two. Um, but he was like, but actually, if you wanted my gloves, I would rather have a pair of gloves. And I was like, I made you a pair of gloves. He's like, yeah, like a decade ago and they're starting to fall apart. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. So I made him the exact same, um, the exact same pattern, but different yarn. Because... His pair of these gloves were either red and gray and black or blue and brown and cream. Um, it was hippie penguin yarn. I don't remember what yarn this is, but anyway. <laughs> so funny that I remember that, but not this. Okay, so these are naughty. I don't remember who it's by. Can you see? Oh, you can see. Okay. So it's got this cable detail, and this ca that cable detail actually goes right here but it's easier to show you on my palm. Isn't it beautiful? It's so pretty. And it goes on the back of both wrists. And it's just, like, it, it looks really, really fancy, and it looks really complicated, but it's really not. Um, and then, you know, the the rest is stuck in it. And the fingers are boring, but they go quick. And... That's why I thought they were never going to get done because the fingers are boring. But they're done! I finished them! I'm so excited. I do not love making gloves, but it's okay. It's what he wanted. And I like making people things that they want. So I'm really excited that these are done. I really, really didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> but it did. So yay! Um, and then I have finished a few hats. So these are, um, these are going to go to my friend Jenna, 716 Knit, Knit Buffalo. She's collecting handmade stuff, um, through the end of November. So I decided, um, cause I'm trying to use up like scrappy bits and stuff and hats I can work on anywhere, including at school as I'm walking around, like they're so... They're so portable, so easy. You can work on them in movies. You can work on them at the line anywhere. So I'm going to make maybe another hat or two. I want to send her 10 things because um, she's doing, I don't know, some sort of drawing or something. So may as well do 10 things so that I'm eligible. So I have one hat, another hat, but I don't want to just make hats. I'm probably also going to crochet some fingerless mitt sets. Um maybe some mittens, knit some mittens. I don't know. I haven't decided. Maybe some cowls, wintry warm things. Um, and then I also have this one. It's a little bit longer because, you know, some people have more hair. 
So it's a little bit bigger circumference, a little bit longer, and uh, yeah, mostly I just wanted to use up this yarn. It's left over from when I made that panda doll. So the, well, actually all of it's used up now. I used up the gray in this hat and then the black and the white in this hat and then this tan color I used here and in a corner to corner blanket so that yarn is all gone. Yay! It's not just sitting around. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then I have actually read some stuff, my friends. Pretty sure I told you about finishing Cassiel's Servant. I definitely remember fangirling about it. Maybe this month, maybe last month. But I did finish it. Loved it. Oh no, that was last month, right? And I finished Fairy Tale this month because that's what I had left to read. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. That was like weeks ago that I finished those books. I don't know. I also read this month Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. Um, if I recorded something about that, I'll put it here and cut out the rest of what I'm about to say. But if not, let me just... It's a... Uh, it's like a middle grade sort of thing. It has a magical school feeling to it, but the the kiddos aren't magic users. They have superpowers, kind of, except Amari has magical powers, which is illegal. So it's very, very interesting. It's um, really entertaining. The pacing is really good. I really, really liked it. Uh, a little, a little predictable, but again, then again, it's a middle grade book. So if the ending was not, if the ending totally shocked me, like that would have been embarrassing for me personally as a lifelong reader. Um, but I really liked it. It was really good. And then after I read that, I picked off of my bookshelf, Friends, I have not been to the library in months because I don't have the spoons to make sure that I return things on time. So I'm actually reading the books that I've purchased. What? This is so weird. So weird for me. But anyway, I'm reading Spin by Lamar Giles. And I think I might be somewhere between a third and halfway. Oh, I'm here. Yeah, between a third and halfway done. I'm that many done. Um, it is kind of a mystery book. It's YA. And DJ Parsec is a DJ. And she is murdered. And her two former best friends, kind of, their relationships are really interesting, um, have to figure out who did it. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's not like a whodunit mystery. It's really cool. There's a lot of like music culture involved in it. And, um, I'm liking it so far. I'm liking it a lot. It's about teenagers. It's about music, as I said. And it's really good. It's really good so far. So kind of, I'm kind, I have some ideas about what the ending is going to be, but I don't have anything definite figured out yet. So I'm really, really liking it. And I'm I'm kind of excited to read the books that I have on my bookshelf. I kind of really miss going to the library also. But I just... I'm, I'm having a really hard time with the spoons right now. Have been. I've been having a hard time with spoons since my mom passed, honestly. Like, I'll, I'll have... I'll wake up and I'll have, like, 20 spoons. And it'll be great. And I'll have a really productive day. And then, like, the next five days, I have, like, two spoons a day. 
sometimes two spoons for five days. It's, it's very, it's very up and down. And it's not just because of my mom passing. Like, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, too. But, it, yeah. Um, so it's better right now that I don't get books from the library, even though I love getting books from the library. And I kind of love that you have to read on a deadline when you get books from the library. So it keeps me on my reading schedule, but I've been doing okay. Not great. I've been doing okay though, reading books that I own. <laughs> I've only finished four in the past like three months, but that's okay. It's not a race. Anyway, I hope you are doing awesome and I am going to put other footage on now. I don't even remember what you're going to see. Oh, I know for sure you're going to see my littlest and I, we went to see Taylor Swift eras. So I have some pictures from that. And that was not, not the concert, the movie, because I can't afford those concert tickets, but the movie was so good. I... It was, I mean, it was like being at a concert, basically, except sitting in a recliner instead of in uncomfortable stadium seats. I mean, I couldn't stand up and like dance around, but I did totally dance in my seat and I sang along to all of the songs that I knew, which were most of them. I think there were like four that I didn't know all of the words to, but like some of the words. I wouldn't consider myself a Taylor Swift fan. I'm definitely not a Swifty, but it was really, really enjoyable. And my daughter really, really liked it, so that was good. I also went to a concert earlier this month um, for, like, one of my favorite bands, Motionless and White. They're a metal core band. Um, and no, I don't just listen to metal core. That just happens to be the concerts that have been coming around. <laughs> that I have been able to get other people to go to me, go with, go to with me. Um, oh, it was so good. It was so like, listen, I did not know. I did not know that Motionless and White had backup dancers and like cinema stuff going on in the background. Like all of my favorite things about pop concerts like, all of that stuff, they had, like, obviously, live band music. Loved that, because uh, they're a band. They play their own instruments. But they also had background dancers. <laughs> what? And their light show was amazing. And their, um, the, they had a giant screen behind them. So, like, sometimes some of the words were displayed, and that was super fun, because I think that more bands should just have karaoke. Like... Not everybody's going to know your words, but if you put them on the screen, more people are going to know your words. And you know what's fun for me as an audience member? When other audience members are singing along. And I'm sure that's fun for the band. So, yes. Oh, it was, oh, it was so good. It was so great. Um, and we went to the hotel. I talked about that last episode. We were going to a hotel for my daughter's birthday, so we did that. My daughter is now officially old. And yeah, that's fun. That was, we had a really good time. We talked about the blanket at the hotel. So you saw that. Yeah. So those are some of the things you'll see. I don't remember what else I did. I went to the movies a few times. Probably see that in here. I don't think there was anything else really not notable. I don't remember. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I will see you uh, at the end of November, beginning of December. Bye for now, friends. Hello, sunshines. I finished the little panda doll. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. It's got a little tail. It's got ears and eyes on the hood. I think it's pretty cute. I used Broco Vintage Baby. Um, in colors 1001, 1002, 10072, and 10032. Um, I bought another skein of this because I 
have another project in mind to use the black for, but I don't know what I'm going to do with the white and the kind of tan color. Uh, I might put it into a scrappy blanket. I might make a hat or something out of it. I don't know. I haven't decided. I almost, seeing how cute this is, I almost want to make the little sheep with the white. Like make a little doll with textured stitches instead of just single crochet. But I don't know. I'm not, um, <laughs> I'm not committing to that because while I like the idea, I don't actually want to make another toy <laughs> like ever. Oh, why do I do this to myself? I know I don't like making toys and yet I still do it, but I think it turned out super cute and I finished before the concert. So good job me. So this is what I did on girls weekend. I made a sky shard cowl pattern by Amanda Manis. Um, this is like the fourth one I've made in two years. Is that right? Four? I think so. I made one in the fingering weight version and this is the third um, DK weight version which I made using a strand of DK weight for the black. I used leftover yarn from my panda which is ba -dum -ba -dum, Broco Baby Vintage and I for the pinks and purples I used minis, leftovers. Um, I know this is reading kind of orange, but it's definitely more pinky in the light. <laughs> but you know, it's October, so lighting is weird. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the cowl. I used up 18 pink and purple minis in here. So that's pretty awesome. That's why it's super colorful and different looking and I'm super pleased with it. So I am almost finished with it. I have one final round of the pattern to go. Um, to So it'll look kind of like this bottom section. And then just a few rounds of single crochet at the top. And this cowl will be finished. This is one of the holiday gifts that I'm planning to give this year. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I hope the recipient really likes it. And this might just be the year of the cowl. <laughs> because on a weekend where I don't have too much to do, I can make a whole graphic, beautiful, kind of heavy but not super heavy cowl. So that might be a thing. Okay, this hat is done. I feel like it could be... Like, that could be considered a hat. It's not my preferred length for a hat, but I know some people really, really like, like, shorter beanie sort of thing. So, I don't know. I think it might be done, though, because that's all the yarn. I have an idea of yarn that could be used, but I, I'm not, like, obsessed with the idea. Look at this shawl. You know what this means? It means autumn is finally upon us. Oh, I unpacked my shawls and stuff over the weekend and I'm ready to take them to school because it is chilly. It is, last week was like 70s Fahrenheit and then all of a sudden it was like, ooh, we're going to drop 20 degrees. <laughs> so my heat has already kicked on because my house has gotten real cold. Not my favorite thing. I prefer to not have to turn on the heat until November, but you know... I love, I love that it's chilly now, um, and I love this shawl. I don't remember what it's called. It's a, it's a Josh Rex Rabinsky design, and this is one of his original samples. He made it for me, so I love it. Um, anyway, I came here to check in with you about a few things. So I finished a cowl that I was working on in last month's vlog I was just using up singles yarns and um, I did use up the one a really colorful one and then another singles that's just kind of pinkish um, I think I used up three balls 
two singles? Or was it just two? I can't remember. I didn't use up all of my leftover singles. I have um, a nugget about this big of the brown that I was using, and there's like that more yellowy, goldy color. This one, this yellowish, goldish color. Um, there's more of that, like kind of a big ball. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's like perfect around the neck size, good, giftable cowl. Fairly neutral, but pretty, I think. So I finished that. There's no pattern. It was two singles held together, fingering weight, so makes a DK weight. I think I used size five needles. Um, I think I, I, I think I told you the wrong numbers last time, so I'm gonna talk numbers really quick. I'll give you a moment in case you're counting. Okay, so I cast on 35 stitches. I used three stitches on either end for I cord, and then I did three stitches of garter stitch on either end, and then stockinette in between that. So whatever that ended up being, that's the stitch count for this cowl. I think it turned out really pretty. There's like a fun party side and a like more chill side. <laughs> um, and then I picked up a project that I have been sorely, <laughs> sorely lacking on. I have did I just pull out a needle? I totally did. Hold on. Hold please. I have these gloves for my kid's dad. And I hate doing fingers. I hate them. But I brought it to class tonight because I'm going to pick up the next finger before class starts. Um, because they're easy. Oh, excuse me. They're easy. They're just dead boring. That's why I hate doing them, right? So here's the glove. It's the second one. I'm so close to done. I just need to do it. And now I have the two longest fingers done. So the rest is easy. Um, his fingers are just a tiny bit longer than mine, even though he's way taller than me. I have really big hands. Um, so yeah, there's that. And my hope is to finish this glove this week. I'd really like to finish it this week, but definitely this month. If I don't finish it this week, I want to finish it this month. And then I'm also going to show you one other thing. Ta -da, ta -da. Amari and the Knight Brothers. It's really good. It's, um, I guess this would probably be YA. I'm not really sure. The main character is 13 and she, well, there's magic involved. Um, her brother has gone missing. He's 10 years older than her. He's gone missing and she wants to find him. And then she finds out that there's like this whole world of magic. I'm not very far. Y'all, I'm reading a book that I actually bought myself. <laughs> I'm not reading a library book, weird. But I'm reading a book that I actually bought for myself last year. It'll be on my shelf for less than a year. With me for me to have read it so weird um i'm really enjoying it it's like it's fun it's a really fun read especially because the last two books and several audiobooks i've read have been meant for adults it's fun to read something that's written for kids again but i'm really really liking it it's really well written it's a really fun story highly recommend if you like like that young adult j fick sort of magical stuff this is this is that and I'm really really liking it so I also worked on this hat that I started using leftovers from the panda I knit next month and um, this gray blue color is from the skirt that I made for my daughter just leftover bits from that um, and the black I also used in the sky shard cowl the one with the pink i'm just i'm just trying to make a painting and look at oh look at you helping what you don't see hold on let's see if he'll do it
Yeah, see? Oh, this is very helpful. Most, most least helpful. Most least helpful. Ew. Also, I received a really lovely package from a friend. Just a, a little pick-me-up because losing my mom was hard. So she sent me these minis. Aren't they beautiful? I'm thinking that I might try to um, work them into blankets this coming weekend. Probably not all of them. <laughs> That would have to be a only knitting weekend, but I don't have to work next weekend, so maybe. Maybe I'll try to knit all of them into blankets, but not knit, like knit each one at least once into a blanket or crochet, but not necessarily try to use up this whole bag of yarn. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my goal for this coming week. I don't know. Listen, I can't be trusted at the Scholastic Book Fair, especially when we got a voucher for books. So some of these books I didn't have to pay for. So, okay, don't call me grumpy corn. Like, mm, I had to. I'm going to put this right on the cat. Um, kitty corn. Itty bitty kitty corn, in fact. I don't even know what these books have on the inside because I didn't look. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Battle for the Pumpkin King. What? Had to. Absolutely. It's a graphic novel. See, there's so many that they won't even stay on the stack. Oh, and the cat found the bag that they were in. Um, In my defense, this one's not for me. I got this for my sister because she's the panda. Pete. The Kitty and the Unicorn's Missing Colors. I'm going to read this and then give this to a child. It's going to be great. And then I love Disney princess stuff or like Disney things. This one's called Cold Hearted. Haven't read this one. This is Poor Unfortunate Soul. Haven't read that one. I don't think. What if Cinderella never tried on the glass slipper? So this is Love, Twisted Tale. So I've read books out of both of these series before, but I'm pretty sure that the books I picked up I have not read yet. And if I did, whatever, it's fine. Obsessed, this is a memoir of life with OCD. My work wife and I are going to read this and have a book club. She bought it also. She bought it because I bought it. And then we totally had a mean girls moment in line with other teachers who were buying things because their friends were buying things. So she wore flip flops and or camo pants and flip flops. So I wore camo pants and flip flops. Yep. We had that. I bought this because it was $3. I don't know. It looks like it could be good. What do you think? You think you want to read a book too? Do you think you want to get in the way of everything? Of course you do. I got this one because it's $3. Long live the pumpkin queen. I'm excited for this. This is not a graphic novel. And then another of the, which one's this? Never, never. Do you need a punch in the face? Never after. I heard this was good. And it's by Melissa Dela Cruz, whose stuff I like and have read and, you know, all the lo lovely bad ones. Also $3. Um, look at this. Comics collection collections. Disney Princess Comic Collection. Had to. Even if it wasn't $3. But then it was only $3. And then these I got for my best friend. Because she likes Star Wars. And their graphic novels. I thought she would like that. With some cat bites in it. With some look at that face. Do you need a punch right in the nose? Do you do? Do you do? Do you love it? Oh, just a little baby kitten. Not so baby anymore. It's just, a, what are you, a tween now? A teenager? Yeah, I would guess. 